Hi friends, I'm Matt from theshavingcadre.com. Uh, tonight I'm doing a honing video. Um, I'm going to be bevel setting this Genco Easy Aces from uh, Bradford, PA. Uh, my understanding from my friend Jerry is that this razor was produced after um, Case Cutlery had purchased uh, the Genco or Genco uh, razor line, or rather their entire line. Uh, and so these were produced in Bradford there, um, either at the Case factory or at a factory nearby. That's my understanding. I could be completely wrong about that. Um, but uh, definitely um, Ginko, I know, was uh, at first in uh, New York. So I'm going to go ahead and hone that razor today. Um, just before I get started, uh, I want to let you guys know this is a, um, more than anything, this is a honing journal of mine. Um, this is uh, my process. Um, it's a conglomeration of uh, processes that I've learned over the last eight years from different people, uh, including Lynn Abrams, Keith Johnson. Um, you know, I, I, don't, uh, I don't try to uh, preach one philosophy over another. Uh, each razor is different. Each steel is different. Um, and um, yeah, if you see something I'm doing wrong, um, by all means, let me know. Uh, I'm always glad to chat about it, and uh, I, uh, I enjoy constructive criticism. Uh, otherwise, um, <laughs> keep it to yourself. I appreciate it. Um, thank you. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started then. Um, I've already pre-wet my stone. Uh, hopefully this angle will work tonight. Um, this is a Naniwa 1K. Um, Naniwa Superstone 1K. Um, usually I always get started out by uh, checking to see exactly where we're at um, with the bevel by uh, doing about 50 strokes one direction and then checking the edge to see where we're, uh, we're contacting. Um, I'm going to go ahead and kill the edge on the side of my bourbon glass here to get started. And we'll go from there. So I usually start off with a little pressure. So that's about just a little bit more than the weight of the blade is what I start out with. I like to check and see if I'm pulling a burr. And actually I am pulling a burr across the great majority of the edge already. Um, so I'm gonna work and I can see the edge uh, that I'm hitting the entire edge up and down. You can see it's kind of shiny uh, all the way up and down. I'm gonna do another 50 back the other direction. This razor actually has very little wear on it. So I had a feeling it would kind of come together quick. Um, so I'm going to do another 50 the other direction, see where we're at, and it uh, looks like I'm going to need to do some rolling X strokes to achieve an edge on this heel because it's got a smile here and just a hair of a smile on the toe, so I'll be working those in as well. So. That's another 50 that way. Check that burr. And it's pretty much a bit, I can pretty well see the burr on this one. Very, very little pressure needed. And I can see that I have a, a solid burr on this razor. And you may be able to see it because I've got some updated lighting. Let me get the lighting down here. Might be able to see the burr, I doubt it on the video, but uh, I can feel a burr and see a burr all the way up and down this, all the way to the heel right about here. And so we're gonna catch the rest of that with rolling X strokes. Um, I'm gonna finish um, killing this burr off by uh, reducing my strokes, and then I'll switch over to rolling X strokes to make sure I get the toe and the heel for sure, so. It's always nice. 
with these vintage razors when you get to have one that um, doesn't have a ton of wear on it. Um, and the bevel set goes nice and quick. So I just did 30 strokes, half strokes. And this is just a little bit more than the weight of the blade. Just 30 back the other direction. I'll cut it down to 20. Go down to 10. And just like that, we've got a nice bevel going. We're undercutting real well, and we're there. Now some folks might see, I've got my, I'll have, whenever I'm setting that bevel with that burr method, I'll have all my fingers on here. I'm, I'm using equal pressure when I'm doing that. I'm not leading with my, my pinky or my, my index finger in any way, and I'm not, putting a ton of pressure down on the on the tang but uh, that's just the process that's worked for me so right now I'm uh, doing some pressure on my rolling X stroke to get that heel and then rolling it to the toe I'm not going to do a lot of it because this doesn't need a ton But with my undercut, I can tell I'm pretty well there. And then the stone is giving me a lot of feedback. It's slowing me down quite a bit. Wanting to bite a hold of the, uh, the razor pretty well. I'm gonna stop there for a second. And I'm gonna take a quick look at my bevel. I'm not trying to cut my finger. And it looks good. Um, I'm gonna work the heel just a hair more, try and get there. And uh, I think we'll be there very quickly. Now, my friend, uh, Novice Wet Shaver, this is his razor. Um, he has asked me to put a few different edges on his razor, so I actually have a Haldestrand MK31 and this Easy Aces. And I'm planning on putting a Jasper edge on this one. And I guess I'll see if I need to take a break at the end of doing these stones or whatnot. I may just go ahead and do the entire honing progression in one video, um, but I haven't quite decided what I'm gonna do yet. So I'm thinking I'll probably make two videos and upload them separately, or maybe I'll just cut them down and smash them into one. I guess we'll, we'll see what happens. Like I said, on these rolling X strokes, I'm just putting a little torque toward the heel 
and then toward the toe as I'm finishing that stroke. Get a little water on the stone. Rinse a little of this schwarf off. Not sure if I'm gonna get to the other razor tonight or not. I was hoping to do a test shave with at least one razor, so uh, it's already like, I think 9.30, 9.40. Um, so I'm thinking I'll probably just get one done. Just uh, double check my bevel here. Do the thumb pad test. Feels like it wants to bite. Really quite bitey toward the middle and toe. Not quite so much toward the heel. I'll just do the, I always like doing the cherry tomato test. Yep, just as suspected. It needs a little bit more work toward the heel really there on the toe and in the middle. So we'll keep at it a little longer. Lightening up my touch now. I think I've pretty well got it there. At least by the undercut on the heel, it looks like it. Definitely feels like I got it there.
Maybe just a few more strokes on that heel. We're real there, real close to being there. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the heel here with a little bit of Sharpie. I'm sure we're getting all the way there. I know we are, but just to confirm. Doesn't hurt. Yep, we are there, all the way up and down. Just for me, I'm gonna do just a few more strokes and we'll move on up. I can see the, uh, the bevel all the way up in that smile now. Do 10 more light ones and we'll call it a day. That might have been 11. Yeah, very sticky all the way up. Yep, the heel's there now. Perfect. We'll move up to 5K. I've had some folks mention I should pick up a 3K. It would shorten my progression. But I've been working with a 5K for quite a long time. Um... And I agree, it probably would shorten my progression here if I did have it. But uh, I just haven't found it necessary. Um, maybe in the future I'll pick one up. I mean, I've made it a long way with going 1K to 5K. Maybe if I end up with some extra cash, which I doubt. <laughs> uh, spend enough on razors. lightly kill this edge so I can join it.
giving it a little extra love to the, the heel there. It's uh, been a little bit more difficult. Pretty close to being there. Starting to feel it stick a little bit. I'd say we'll move on to the 8K here shortly. Bevel set stage is pretty much done though. Rinse a little swarf off, get back to it. I did clean up this razor today using my um, buffing wheels and some compound and some real light sanding. Didn't really need a whole lot. Had a whole bunch of um, old dried grease on it, or oil rather. Uh, that's probably how it stayed in such good condition all these years. Had a little bit of rust, not much. up to some really light strokes and then we'll lighten it up even more get into the 8k and then we'll move on to finish um, I usually if I'm gonna finish with my Jasper I like to jump between an 8k 
and the Jasper with a pre-finisher. So I like my Jasper pretty glassed out. Um, rather, I guess the more technical term would be um, not glassing, but uh, loaded up. Um, gosh, I'm forgetting that uh, terminology off the top of my head. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I like it to, to uh, be more of a finisher than a than a cutter. Uh, I don't want it to cut as fast. Um, so I usually go to uh, a Dota Creek um, which is somewhere around a 9 to 10k or a um, uh, Calico Cream which is a Co stone. Um, gentleman by the last name Co that produces stones out of Arkansas and um, I usually like to use that Calico Cream or the Dota Creek to um, just kind of move the razor up to that next level right before finish. Kind of prepares the edge a bit. We should be there. You can see the edge should be back. Oh yeah, cutting real well. No problem. I'll go ahead and just do maybe 10 more real light laps. And we should be uh, ready to move on. I've gotten some grief from some folks for taking too long to do my honing videos, but you know what? Like some people speed up the process and you know, that's fine. I mean, if you want to do that, but, you know, I'm honing a vintage razor, um, and I know uh, a lot of people hone vintage razors, and, and the fact is, sometimes they take a while, and uh, if you want to skip through it, that's okay. If you want to skip through the stones, that's okay, but you can see my entire process, and I can see my entire process. Like I said, this is, a, this is kind of a journal. So, I mean, if anybody else wants to join along, that's great. But uh, I like to look back on these videos and see what I'm doing. If, uh, if my uh, razor didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. I'm seeing a good undercut all the way up and down the blade on this and I know I'm in contact with the stone I'd say we are done really getting a lot of good feedback from the stone too it's getting kind of tuggy and bitey so move my diamond plate and this here underneath my um, under my stone holder this is a um, it's an old Corona um, an old Corona bar mat that is just perfect for catching the water and the swarf coming off of the stone and so that's my uh, my tool, I know some folks have what, I think they're called uh, honing baths, um, or maybe I'm getting that term wrong, but um, to me this works out really well. Pretty much all you gotta do is, I take my paper towels that I've been uh, using to wipe my blade and I soak up some of that water and um, then I um, carry it over to the sink and dump out the water.
turn my lighting down just a hair. Seeing a little bit of a little bit of cloudiness in my water. I don't know if I had a little bit of uh, stone powder still sitting on there or what, but that's all right. I'll remove it. Pretty well done already. We've got a uh, pretty solid undercut all the way across the blade, and the blade is wanting to stick to the stone, so I'm gonna be done here real soon. I think the heel can use just a hair more, so I'm gonna do some circles. I'd say that's it for the 8K. And I think I'll go strop this. And then um, once I'm done stropping it, I'll uh, go ahead and do the finish. I'm trying to see if I can get it to focus. I don't think it really wants to on the blade. But you got a nice, crisp, clean, shiny bevel. And uh, it looks pretty good to me. So I will see you either in the next video or I will go ahead and connect it to this one. Thank you. Uh, have a great night.